Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in really awkward lighting. I promised you some instances of substitution instances. Let's, let's try that again. I promised you some examples of substitution instances at both the term level and the formula level. Now, I'm actually going to give you more than that. I'm going to give you substitution instances and things which are not. So you can use this as a little test of your understanding to see do you, are you able to spot when you have a substitution instance of some formula or term, and when don't you? So, hey, come on. We may get a cat. So here's a handy dandy table. We have well-formed formulas in this column. We have x equals y, x, oop, there goes our cat. I told you we are here for the awkwardness. Come on, boss. Okay. Well-formed formula in this column. We've got x equals x. We have x equals y implies y equals x. And for all x, x equals y implies y equals x. In the middle column, we have things which are substitution instances. So you can double check this by comparing this against the definition given in the previous video. In this, in the last, hey, in the last column, we have things that are not substitution instances. And I'm going to leave it as a bit of an exercise for you to try to figure out why they aren't. But I will give you a hint. And it has to do with the fact that substitution as a procedure in logic is often identified as uniform substitution. So let that be a clue so that you can look through all of the things, put it back up again, all of the things in this column that say not substitution instances and see if you can use uniformity as a clue to where they have gone wrong. It's not the answer to all of them though. So give it a shot. If you've got any, if you think you know it and you're perfectly fine, yeah, substitution instances are easy, Dr. Logic, then good for you. If you're uncertain, put your answers in the comments and I will happily take a look. And I think we better finish this video now. Maybe I will wait a few minutes before trying to do another one because there's one more step that we need to talk about with substitution, which is whether or not a substitution is allowed. Because one thing that we haven't talked about is, so we've made a big fuss about substituting things in only for the free variables and leaving the bound ones unchanged. But what would happen if we've got a formula that has a bunch of quantifiers and something that was free when you started and you did some substitution? Maybe you pick another variable and you substitute it in and then that occurrence of a variable now becomes bound. That's not going to be allowed. We are going to exclude those cases, but I will tell you more about this in the next video. So take care. See you then. Possibly see the cat then. Until then, take care. Cheers.